<laughs> so we're here with Levi Salua, uh, probably one of the, so. the the best alto saxophone players in Sacramento. Sure. Um, he, he, he rightfully so, I think. I definitely think so. Um, so that's why he's the MD for <laughs> STRQ. Um, so Levy, how long have you been running Shine's jam session? Um, I've been running for a little over a year. I took it over in October, I think, of 2000, what year is it? 2015. 15, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Numbers. Not good with them. So what, what, um, what inspired you to really just, you know, take that role and, and want to keep going it? Um, I had nothing better to do. <laughs> <laughs> and a friend of mine started this jam. Okay. His name's Jason Galbraith. Um, and so he was trying to find someone to give it to, and he didn't want to give it to me because he didn't want to put it on me. <laughs> but I volunteered, so that's how I ended up with this this fine event. Well, yeah, it's definitely uh, that's why I met you. Right. Actually, um, so <laughs> most of these musicians are are they local or are they um, students? Uh, give me give us a little history on. Um, most of the time, they're local musicians, usually college students, college age students, sometimes high school students. Every now and then, a middle school student will come, and that's pretty entertaining yeah. for a number of reasons. Um, but uh, during the holiday seasons, usually you'll get some, some guys traveling through, or maybe during um, like a musical tour that's coming through town, some, some of the pit orchestra musicians will come and sit in. And that's always kind of fun, just to get some fresh faces and new sounds in the jam session. Yeah. And I think for for Sacramento, how, how is this? Do you do you think this is a, a great place for for jazz, and and, and is it growing? Uh, it can be a great place for jazz. Yeah. It has potential. It's always had potential. Um, really, the probably the the thing that it needs most is venues. Um, Shine is a great establishment. They have us here every week. And then even on the weekends, sometimes we'll have jazz shows as well. They always have live music on the weekends. Um, but there, there are so few other venues like them um, in Sacramento that it makes it kind of hard to, to, um, to make a living just playing in this town um, as a jazz musician. And outside of Shine, what, what do you do as far as, you know, you know what's your career? Do you have the um, coming up? <laughs> well, just the way the timing worked out, I think there are like maybe four albums coming out this year in 2017 that I co-wrote or arranged or played on or produced or some some extent. Um, I have a record coming out, you have a record coming out. <laughs> um, a group in Stockton that I work with, the Soul Band, they have an album coming out this year. Um, and then <laughs> an Eastern European folk band that I used to play with, they have, I think they have an album coming out this year as well. So it's should be a should be an interesting year for me just saturating the airwaves. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> well, we, we love what you do, man, and keep it up. And thank you. Um, oh, my for pleasure. Being a part. And, uh, get back in there and give us some more notes, man. <laughs> I'll give you all twelve. Keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So we're here with Patrick Anderson, better known as Patrick Pac-Man Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. Uh, I'm glad you're part of STRQ. You're a big inspiration to the group and a driving force. Um, so one of my first questions is, how did you get that nickname, Pac-Man? Uh, to be honest, it was kind of made up. Uh, I've never had a nickname that stuck uh, for drumming. And so I was like, OK, maybe I sh this, is, this is the perfect time to get a nickname that'll stick, cause no one know me here. It was, I think it was at uh, Fort Bragg. Was it Fort Bragg? Yeah, like nobody know me here. Let's try this out. And <laughs> it's kind of a thing. Uh, I've, I've, I've also had a lifelong goal of giving everyone nicknames in the band. So far, one of them is stuck, which is uh, Uncle Ben. Shout out to Uncle Ben, bass player holding it down. That's right. But yeah, uh, that's really it, man. Just made it up on the spot, and I kind of like it, cause it, it kind of fits. Kind of fits. I know you play drums in church a lot. Um, what church do you play at? Uh, right now, Sacramento Christian Center with the amazing Joseph Guidry. Okay. Mentor, friend. Okay, that's good. Um, so how is it different 
playing in church and playing in this group, I know I, I've asked you to do um, some things that I saw other drummers do, like uh, Corey Fonville from uh, from Christian Scott's band with the what's, what's it? it's a DX pad. DTX pad. DTX pad. Yeah, um, yeah. That yeah. So talk a little bit about that. It's funny because like you know when you play in a church on any given Sunday, you're playing Latin and jazz and fusion. You know, all in one song. Like example, a song called uh, "Glorious" by um, by Israel Houghton. Um, he, the song has like this really rich Latin feel, mm -hmm. but some of the chops and moves in the song aren't you know the the flams that you get in a lot of Latin or the single stroke roll stuff. It's more gospel uh, um, linear pattern and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I was accustomed to some of the things. But then it's like the it's the jazz stuff was really hard for me to catch on to. I'm not gonna lie, when I first got in the band, I was intimidated. Like I was like, Bruh, you could find somebody <laughs> that's that, that could do this stuff yeah. um, at at a higher level than me because I'm I really don't know. But I I do know the basics, keeping a pocket. I know how to play a tune bow. I know how to um, play quarter note swing, which I just learned like the month before. Like got it really got it down. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say, but I would say, like I've noticed that while being in the band, there was this transition from um, being um, the the quartet to like really pushing the rebel part of it. Right. Like that's where the DTX pass started coming in, where mm -hmm. we right. take a song that was like, like uh, I don't think a lot of people, a lot of the fans, remember the original version of. Um, uh, Route, 50? Route 50, yeah. yeah. Route 50 actually was an Afro-Cuban joint. <laughs> yeah, it was the Afro-Cuban joint the way it used to start out. Now it's like this mellow, trap, 16th note, hi-hat groove. That's right. And it's, it's beautiful. I like it. You know, and put throwing the pad in there and adding those elements of hip hop and fusion, it just for, for me it elevates the song. I don't think I I don't think I personally played the um, any of our songs the same way twice because it just it right. feels different. I, and one thing that another thing that was kind of hard to kind of really catch on to playing from church to playing with the band was playing out more because mm -hmm. you know playing in church. I, you know, my uh, my buddy Dante Moore would always say, find a pocket stay in it <laughs> you know you don't want to overplay a singer or overplay uh, a part of a worship song um but like you guys would always tell me do more play more you know play play with ben play against them play with the keyboard player you know uh phrase with them solo with them you know that's what that's what we want you to do and it took me a while 
and I'm still working on it, but it's that's probably the hardest thing to transition from the, the gospel scene to, you know, what we do now. Sweet. So have you ever played with a steel drum player? And what, what was, <laughs> <laughs> and how, how has that been for you? Uh, it was funny because like when I first found out, I got the call from uh, Larry, my teacher, because he just moved to L.A. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I can't do it. It's a still uh, still uh, still drum guy. And I'm like, oh, reggae. I can play reggae all day, every day. Like, no. No. I'm like, that's it. Okay. That's, that's easy money. I can do that. I can do that. And, and then uh, get to the first rehearsal, and I'm having like all this sheet music. And in my mind, I'm like, what do we do with this? <laughs> I haven't read since like high school. And even now, it's like, I can't. You have to write out one drum yeah. for me. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for the one on the paper here. This is a CO2. Uh, and so I'm like, all right, cool. Put all this on the floor. <laughs> I'll read this later. Um, and, and I, it wasn't what I expected, to be honest, man. It wasn't. It kind of reminds me of, um, um, I don't want to say xylophones, and I call that what, marimbas? Um, the vibes? Yeah, the Vibe vibes. Song? It kind of It kind of reminds me. How, how vibes would lead in like a, tr a traditional jazz setting, but it's, but hearing you play things, like my, my personal favorite thing that you do mm -hmm. is your uh, solo, the, the solo you take sometimes after um, uh, Route 50. Oh, that after, yeah. Yeah, after, you, after the fade out, we mm -hmm. slow down, we fade out, and then it's just you, and you'll do a bunch of stuff, and then uh, you'll play to the crowd, like you'll do like the uh, boom, do 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 and you're going to like some crazy solo and you're going to something else and it's just like it's mind blowing man like if if anyone ever goes to a show and they hear me in the background yelling just woo or shaking my head like why did he just do that that's dope but yeah it's I would I would say overall it's I I mean it's it's an instrument so it it didn't really throw me off but I was impressed at the range it has as to what it can do. Because I've only, you know, most people have only hear still drums in one setting. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm getting off the island, I got my coconut, I got my hat, you know, my, my Hawaiian shirt, and that's pretty much about it. But to have it as the centerpiece of this great jazz experience is just, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's unheard of. Thank you. Thank you. So what did you, where would you like to see us go? Like, um, I don't know if you know it, but um, there's not many doing what we're doing, yeah, you know, um, and incorporating, you know, there's maybe out there now, there's maybe four or five other people doing our sound. I, I, um, so where do you see us going? You see us like, what, what do you think is the future? You know, I've never like really thought like, I've never really, s thought past like what we're doing now to be honest mm -hmm. um but i see it you know i'm the kind of person where if i see potential in something i'll invest in it you know a, a lot of times in the band um like when we're not when we're not playing a gig or something i'll hit i'll send you a pitch yo sean i got this new trigger so yeah. i could use it on my side snare so instead of hitting you the pad i can yeah. use this or i, like I <laughs> or uh, recently, I bought the little the kick thing, yeah, and I'm right. like, yeah, man, I got the advertisement because I'm excited <laughs> about the band, and yeah. I um I truly believe that the sound and what we do will take us to that place. What what my my favorite thing that we do in the band is that we go to like these jazz spots mm -hmm. that are like <laughs> they <laughs> this this has been the history of the band. We we'll go to a jazz spot and they're like. Oh, so you guys, uh, I thought you were a quartet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, don't you have a smaller drum set? What's a, what's a sample pad? Uh, How do you mic steel drums? Yeah. And they're like, oh, your bass player has an electric bass too. And they're like, and they're nervous. You can see the promoter. They're like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> Who are these guys? And then uh, we'll, pl we'll start off by playing like something traditional. And you know, the crowd feels it because it's a standard or something or it's, more, it's a traditional sound. But then we'll go into something like West Coast and or our, our rendition of Punk Party, and the next thing you know, everyone's like, what was that? Are you serious? Like, I still, to this day, to this day, I get nervous every time we play uh, Route 50. I'm like... Because <laughs> you don't know how the crowd is going to react. To the trap music. Yeah, and so, yeah. I mean, honestly, 
if you look at me, you can't tell because I'm like, I'm just in my zone having a blast. But then I look out and I see like an older white couple like, I was like, yeah, they like it. They like it. Yeah. So I, I honestly, I see us going to more venues. And I think that word of mouth is going to take us to bigger and bigger venues, man. And that's how, like, one of my favorite bands in the world, Snarky Puppy, that's how they started out. Mm-hmm. Playing local bars, you know, torn out of the back of a white van. And word of mouth made them so big that they just exploded. Like, um, you didn't, I haven't told you this yet, but my buddy hit me up last night. He was like, some guy was talking to me about your band last night. Really? Yeah, my buddy, he works for a, a, a tech company oh, <laughs> in San Jose. And he's yeah. like... Yeah, my buddy was at that was at the show at Cafe oh, Stretch, and Cafe he was like, Stitch, yeah. he was like, "Yo, he said you guys are dope." And I was like, "Yes." So yeah, it's and I wasn't even talking about the band. We were talking about Instagram, stupid stuff, jokes and stuff, and he just brought it up. So yeah, yeah I'm just I just get I'm excited about the band. I think we're go, I think we're going places, and I'm glad to be a part for the ride, man.